How you doing, baby? It is Monday. Damned if another Monday didn't fall around. They click by one by one, baby. And we get closer to November 3rd. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed your weekend. It's Monday. And things are looking good down here in South Texas. Another hot day. I hope your day is shining. The sun is shining wherever you're at. You're having a good day. If not, try to make the best out of it. It's all you got. Anyway, uh, what's going on? Well, I had a great conversation on the phone today with our friend and fellow Blue Dot member, uh, Joe, uh, known as Ohio Dad 70, Ohio Dad 70, up in Columbus, Ohio, and his cousin Steve uh, was a conference call. We all got on there, had a great discussion, and it, it delved into many subjects, including uh, the possibility of an amendment to our Constitution, which I'll bring up tomorrow night in our family meeting. There's a lot of things going on in this world, indeed in this country. Uh, we, have, we have talks going on about the police brutality uh, while, we, while we watch policemen uh, on trial for murder. Every time there's a crisis in this country or any other country, there are going to be those that seek to capitalize on that chaos. O on the protest on the street, there are going to be those that, that use that crisis, that, that momentum to, to rob a store or to loot somewhere, to create damage. There are also those who will use a crisis who wear the uniform of, an, of a police officer, who will use that authority. And some of what we have seen with a lot of, a lot of determination to beat back those protesters. This swings both ways, baby. While the man in our house screams law and order in his little Twitter feed from the bunker of the house, that we own, the little chicken coop he's turned it into. By the way, that wall that he has built around, that fence that he built around himself to protect himself from the people has become a memorial to George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and the injustice that, these, that our fellow citizens have suffered since the beginning of this country. I'm happy to see that. Let him build his little wall, his little fence. Let him go hide in his bunker. He's not going to get away from this shit. It's on all the TVs that surround his bed, baby. There's talk about reform. Not, not, not just criminal reform. Not just justice reform. Police reform. They're talking about defunding police, demantling the police department. There's a lot of people thinking outside of the box right now because of what we have seen. While he screams law and order, there will not be law and order until there is truth and justice. Truth and justice precedes law and order. You cannot have law and order if you do not have truth and justice. That's what we are talking about. And right now in this country, truth and justice is, is being put on display. It's not all the truth. Oh, the old man fell down. He tripped. No, it didn't. You shoved him. Okay, we shoved him. That guy acted aggressive, so I beat the shit out of him. No, he didn't act aggressive. George Floyd resisted arrest. No, he didn't. It was one cop that decided on his own that he was going to snuff the light out of George Floyd. He had eight minutes and 47 seconds, 48 seconds, to think about what he was doing, and he continued to do it. A duty to intervene. A duty of a lawman, uh, an officer of the law, to uphold the law even if that means going against your partner. I said it before, what should have happened in that situation with George Floyd is that officer standing there should have turned around, drew his weapon on the other officer and told him to stand down. Because that's what he would have done in any other situation. 
that's what we need. And if it takes firing a whole police department and making every one of them reapply for their job, it takes making police records, an officer's record, public so we know who we're dealing with. Sky, somebody over there getting 15, 20 complaints against him. Maybe you ought to take a look at him. Maybe he's in the wrong job profession. Maybe he has a little too much pent-up anger. And not only them, it goes, it goes to our, our elected officials, our sheriffs in this county. Hell, our sheriff, our ex-sheriffs out there posting crap about George Floyd murder being a hoax, and it's all meant to hurt Donnie. That's the ex-sheriff of my county, who is currently the chairman of the Republican Party here in my county who even though my governor has asked him to resign his post, he's standing there going, no, I'm not. Hey, all I'm doing is sharing information. No. He's an immoral man that shares conspiracy theories, tried to incite somebody else. We don't need that. Truth and justice. You want your law and order, you get truth and justice first. Then it follows, baby. Then we have a, we have, we have a, uh, a security department that, that is concerned about the public. Not his personal vendetta against a race or any other asterisk. Henry Rogers. This is the little cockroach. Here's your cockroach who in Richmond, Virginia drove his car revving the engine up into protesters. Into a Black Lives Matter movement. Ran over the barricade. Let's go, baby. Rum, rum, rum. Let's run it up. He is the admitted leader of the Ku Klux Klan in Virginia. Are you shitting me? They're, they're trying to decide whether they should charge him with a hate crime. What do you think revved that engine up? What made, what made that car? It's the same one that happened in Charlottesville. Don't ask. Is it a hate crime? It's obvious. Do not ask if George Floyd's murder was a hate crime. Look at the officer's face. Yes, it was a hate crime. But I've said before, our military, our police department, our fire department, our hospitals, whatever you want to pick, reflect the community. Meaning if the community has some white nationalists, bet your ass there's some white nationalists on the cop force. They're in your fire department. Those people need to be rooted out of their job. Identified. You want to live like a scumbag? You want to you want to live your life as a racist asshole? Well, your employer should know that shit and be responsible for the people that work there. Society, baby. Oh, them socialists. Yeah, you want a police force? That's, that's socialism, baby. You want the fire department there? That's socialism, baby. While you make up imaginary horror stories about words. Think about the meaning of those words. Anyway, I hope they run this guy into the prison and lock him up and let him go in there with his other little white supremacist, little white nationalist assholes that are already in prison. And let him rot there. Well, they said we're in a recession. Hey, we're officially in a recession since February. I don't know, you know, financial things there, you know, it's all getting down there. Everybody's depressed. We're not in a recession. We're in a depression, an, uh, 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 a national depression. Not financially, baby. Morally. We're depressed to have to fight for the rights that should have been granted 200 years ago that we should live up to the document that we so cherish. But we struggle today. And there's new ideas coming out. There's a young, new generation fixing to take hold, baby. And I'm glad to see it. Change will come. The young people see what's going on, baby. And they're of a generation now where they don't, they're not apt to tolerate it so, lot, so much. George Floyd had a memorial in Houston today. 
I saw it on TV, and I was proud of the people lined up to pay to pay respects to him in his hometown, baby. People that may not have ever met him wanted to come honor him. And tomorrow they will lay him to rest. They will have his funeral tomorrow. And we should all reflect on that in this nation. Along with his name, every other name that is on the long list of those that have been killed in police custody for no reason. So tomorrow night, I remind you, I ask you to take a flashlight outside at 819 in the evening to shine that light up in the air to celebrate George Floyd's life, to lift that light towards heaven, and then hold it there until 827. That's a long time to hold your arm above your head. It will get heavy. You'll want to take it down. And every time you do, think about it. Think about what George Floyd suffered. And keep that light up in the air. And then at 827, central time when George Floyd's light was extinguished by that officer, turn your light off and reflect on what that means. One of our fellow citizens killed at the hands of police for being black. I told Joe and I told Steve and I told you, I don't have to hold your hand to hold you in my heart. And until we all do that, this, this stuff's all going to go down the tubes, baby. It'll just be another time. Some other generation will have to do it later. I don't want to pass this one down to a future generation, baby. We need to do it now. Anyway, that's all I got. It's Monday, baby. Enjoy your rest of your day. Uh, tomorrow night we'll have another family meeting. Uh, I want to thank Maestro for joining us last night. That was a real good surprise and a pleasant, uh, pleasant experience. Anyway, I love y'all. Y'all take it easy, and we'll see y'all later, baby. Bye now.